All right, guys. So today we're going to be taking a look at something that is a little bit harder to get your hands on. <clears throat> this is the Narva RTA or however Narva, however you want to pronounce it. Um, it's by Nar Mods, and is it is the VA addition to their lineup. Um, so this is an RTA. You'll get your typical little Nar hard shell case here. Inside of that, you will get some extra screws. You'll have two extra screws for your posts, and you'll have two extra screws that go on the bottom of your tank. I'll show you that in a minute. And then you'll have a bunch of extra O-rings in there. And you'll have the RTA, of course. Um, you will only get one tank with the RTA stock. I'm not exactly aware if he's doing extra tanks right now. Um, you can buy these knurled tanks, which... I'm pretty sure these neural tanks are by another gentleman. Um, so you can get these neural tanks aftermarket. Um, as of right now, there is no extension kit and I don't expect there to be an extension kit. I'm pretty sure this will be the only option size that you'll be able to get it in. Um, and it is uh, gonna hold about three mLs of liquid, maybe like 3.2 mLs of liquid. Um, it is 22 millimeters in diameter and you have your included drip tip there pull the drip tip off and it's going to be a double o-ring 510 and then you'll see the top of the rta here when you unthread this top piece on the rta you're going to see the bottom of the top piece and it'll have one o-ring around the outside that singular o-ring is going to make a seal around the top section of your tank and then you'll have the threading on the top of the chimney and at the bottom of that thread threading you will have another o-ring right down here at the bottom of your threading which is going to touch right here and create the seal around your chimney just like so. So when you start to thread this on, that's what's holding your tank section all together here. So if you unthread this, as you can see, there is no type of structure to hold this tank on. Um, and it is completely relying on the O-ring down at the base here to hold your tank on. So obviously when you put your top fill piece back on, then everything is cinched together and there's no movement. However, every time you take the top fill off to fill it, this is only hold, held on by an O-ring. And in my opinion, the price point of this is like 295 USD plus shipping and whatever PayPal fees or whatever the payment method may be. So you'll probably end up spending like 320 USD on this. And if you're overseas, obviously it's going to be more for shipping and the conversion to pay for it, the currency conversion. So about 320 after shipping. In my opinion, a tank of this price point um, should definitely be designed more um, advanced than what this is. And now I understand that NAR is like more you know, simplistic bare bones with perfection for machining. But in my opinion, f this isn't an RDA. There are some features that should be done no matter how simple you're trying to go. And, and one of those features should be when you take the top fill off, this tank section should be secured. Because if you're going to fill, you could easily hit this with the side of your bottle or something and then this tank will pop up and then everything that you had there is just going to go everywhere. So taking the tank section off, and I'll give you a look at it here real quick with the knurled tank. I personally think the stock tank is a much better look than the knurled tank. The main problem I have with the knurled tank is you really can't see your juice flow ports. So you can't see how open your juice flow ports are. You can't see if it's open. You can't see if it's closed. Um, so I do definitely prefer the stock tank. However, these are good to have because if you crack the stock tank and as soon as that happens, you're pretty much left um, with nothing. You won't have a tank to use if this is cracked and you don't have an extra. Um, so 
looking down towards the base here we can see this little arm here and you kind of this sits very flush so it's hard to um, get on this to adjust it all the way to the left is going to shut your airflow down all the way and then all the way to the right is going to open it up all the way and obviously you can run it in between to cater to how tight you would like it i would have liked to have seen this arm stick out like half a millimeter more um it it's almost flush it comes out the smallest bit and you can't really move it just by pushing your finger um, so you gotta kind of stick your nail there and not you know drag your nail around the outside of the tank and mess it up so i'll open it now it's open all the way down at the bottom you can see the narmod logo and then the serial number mine is number 110 and then we have two phillips head screws at the bottom here which i will take apart and show you the inside uh, where all the magic is happening in underneath the deck uh, in order to separate the tank section let me thread it down to my build tab here go ahead and put the tip back on it so all the way to the left so threading this tank down onto a mod is the same direction that will open your juice flow and threading the tank off of a mod is what's going to close your juice flow just like that so uh, counterclockwise to open it up or sorry clockwise to open your juice flow counterclockwise to close it as soon as you get to the point where it's fully closed you will then be able to pull straight up and pop your deck out and you can see we have two notches one little oval here and one little oval here and each notch is going to correspond with the notches on the deck and when you find you just line those notches up and push it straight down you can see the nice little tight small chamber in here and it's all domed out having a nice slope right to the chimney so to the deck, you can see we have these typical NAR style um, post screws, which honestly, these big flatheads, I am not a fan of at all because you need a real fat flathead screwdriver because they're so wide, like a flathead like this just turns inside of it. And it works, however, because it turns inside of it, one of the edges of the flathead will push in one particular part of the screw and kind of gouge up the screw uh, you can see your airflow under under coil airflow and it's just four dots on the bottom and i will turn our airflow right here so you can see it shut down oh i'm not sure if you're really seeing that so right now it is shut down Yeah, I don't think uh, I'm going to be able to show this on camera from this angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the bottom out and I'll show you inside. You can see you got these fairly big wicking ports for cotton to stick in and the nice machining marks everywhere. And then we have this little half oval here, which is where your bell cap is going to line up for the juice to flow through into your cotton. I'll open up the base here really quick so I can show you what's going on underneath here and these nice phillips heads that are on the bottom here i would have loved to have seen these nice phillips heads as the grub uh, as the screw for the coil so we'll take out this one screw you have extras for all the screws one pair of extras so we got those two out and then this will just separate like so you have an o-ring around the outside and then a big o-ring in the center and then this is what our 510 is going to be this piece sticking out is going to stick out of the hole to be your 510 and then you have your arm actuator right here which moves back and forth and then this is your positive post and you have to take the screw out for your post to slide it all the way down and out I'm not going to do that basically this just slides straight out 
and then you have an insulator around that make sure if you take it apart you put the insulator back in and then you can see I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it but this arm actuator has the identical four holes that this has and as it turns it shuts down those four holes so we'll push our post back up into place and you can see the very nice machining on this whole RTA. We have our two threading holes right here for our Phillips heads to lock the bottom of the deck back into place. And then we just push this back on, line up the two screw holes, drop it in. One and two. So the tank, the, the, the RTA's deck is built like a tank. This is very, very hefty, dense, well-machined, and great quality stainless steel. All the threading is amazing on the 510. The top, top piece threading is amazing. Um, the biggest problem that I have with the tank really for me is the whole top top fill piece not having any type of threading to lock that tank into place um, also I would have liked to have seen different um, coil screws for the posts and basically you're just gonna screw these screws up and then just like every other many other high-end RCA's it's just gonna lock down in that section there Take our coil, just like that. Boom. There's a single core fused Clapton in there. I'm just gonna pull it off camera so I can cut my leads. Now, I know there's a lot of people that like this tank. Now, keep in mind, there's approximately only 150 of these RTAs out there at the moment. Um, so there isn't too many. But everybody that I've spoke to that owns one, I know a few people that own one and they went and they got a second and some a third. So there are people that really, really like this RTA. Now, um, my favorite RTA to date is the Imperia RTA. Um, I actually have a loaded Imperia package on its way to me now, and I'm very excited to have another Imperia RTA. Um, and there's a new VWM RTA coming out. They are going to be doing the first drop on it in the next couple weeks. On top of that, Unknown is doing just did their first drop for the Enigma RTA, um, which is another very promising looking RTA. I also have the new Hussar RTA coming to me. Um, the Hussar RTA will probably be to me before I get my hands on either of the other two tanks. So um, we have a bunch of RTAs coming down the pipeline for video. And I'm actually very excited to start getting some new RTAs. It's been a while since I really used RTAs. Now for the coil placement, I just pushed my jig flush with the bottom of the deck there. You do have a coil jig cutout rest down there. So you just slam your coil right into that jig rest. Um, coil placement couldn't be any more simple. I'm personally gonna just cut the cotton flush Something that I learned with this particular tank, even though it looks like it doesn't like too much cotton, um, if you go too light, it does not like it. Um, it will um, start to flood on you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna juice it up first and then I'm gonna see what it looks like all juiced up and then I'll make a decision if I'm going to pull more cotton off of this. Yeah, so we will have the new Hisari RTA coming for video as well as the unknown Enigma RTA. 
Um, and I will have my hands on that new VWM RTA as well. So we got a bunch of RTAs coming down the pipeline. And to be honest with you, I have barely been using Boro and Bridges. Um, I've been stuck on the absolute RDA. I've been using that non freaking stop. Um, and I'm excited to start using some tanks again. So, um, Kind of seems like the Boro stuff is going to the wayside and we're seeing a lot of new RTAs and RDA stuff coming. I would really love to see RTAs take off again. So it, it kind of looks like that's the path that we're going and I'm, I'm excited about that. So I clipped a little of the cotton off the one side and I'm just going to start gently forming it down into place. If I feel like the well is getting too full, I will um, cut cut the rest of the cotton off instead of pushing it into the hole. And this looks to be pretty much the perfect amount. Um, the length is barely enough to make it to the bottom of that well. So you don't want it to be stuffed on the bottom of the well. You just want it to just be enough to touch the bottom of that well. And it's just enough cotton to fill out that whole well. Um, don't want to stuff it in there so we're coming out at a what are we looking at point what does that even say i don't even know what that says point eight eight i'm just going to make sure that this doesn't change ohms when i put my cap on nope so i push the cap on and didn't turn it so that means the juice flow is closed I'm going to take the top off and then this is how you fill it just be careful not to knock that tank section around grab this top piece and thread it down like that and I will thread it off this build stand here and put her on a mod Put it on the Black Rose Stealth. So as I thread it down, I'll just keep turning and it'll open that juice flow. I'm gonna turn this down to about 20 watts. Uh, we'll go 19 to start. It is a 0.96 coming out on the mod. So 4.3 volts at 19 watts. Let me open that airflow up all the way. Turn it up to 21.5, 4.7 volts. All right. So you saw the build, you saw the cotton, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> very, very nice machined tank. Now, let me start by saying that I've always loved the look of NAR products, and I've pretty much had them all through my hands except the RDTA, and I've never been able to be a huge fan of them like some people are. I really wanted to like all of the NAR products because of how nice it looks, and you know, making it hard to get just adds to the lure of it. <clears throat> um... I really was looking to get my hands on this RTA. Um, I ended up getting it for RRP. And um, I had very high hopes for it because it's such a little tiny 22 millimeter tank with a very small chamber and RDL style airflow. I would say wide open, it does about a 2.5 millimeter draw. So it is in the middle end of RDL. It's not a loose RDL. It's more of a midline RDL. If you have a bridge and you know what a 2.5 millimeter pin is like, this is about the same wide open. 
you can cut it down to do a tighter RDL and an MTL. Um, but you know, I've just been running it wide open. As far as the wicking goes, I do think it's a little bit finicky. Um, I haven't really had a problem with it wicking. I do think it could have benefited from those outer holes just being like 0.25 of a millimeter bigger in diameter. Um, because I take like long 12, 13 second draws. And I noticed that if I, the way that I want to wick it to let the juice flow really well, um, it starts to gurgle. And when I wick it to where it likes it and, you know, it stays fairly saturated and doesn't leak, um, it doesn't stay as can, as moist as I would like it to towards the end of my long draws. Um, the draw is very smooth. I think the air entering one side of the tank kind of hinders how smooth it could have been. I do think if it had air entry from both sides of the tank, it probably would have felt a little bit smoother than it does. Um, it is very smooth of a draw. I just think that one-sided air entry kind of uh, hinders the potential it could have had with air entering from both sides. Some people might argue with me with that and say it's as smooth as it's it's crazy smooth. But in my opinion, while it is smooth, um, there are some bridges and there are definitely the Imperia RTA has a smoother draw than this. Um, I do prefer the wicking style on a tank like the Imperia as well. I think it stays more saturated. As far as the flavor goes, it does have good flavor for me. I don't think it likes to me. I know guys that run triple core aliens in this and they love it. For me, with a triple core alien, it's just too much, in my opinion, for the tiny little chamber and the amount of airflow you're getting. I think it has better flavor to me with a single core fused Clapton around the 0.8 to 0.9 range, around 20 watts. When I put my triple core alien build in at around 30 watts, it just seemed like it was getting too warm and uh, taking away from the flavor because of the heat holding inside of the chamber. Um, I think the flavor could have been better um, as well as the tank design. Um, for the price point that this is at, I honestly would tell somebody to go the Imperia route. Um, obviously, I have, you know, I'll be doing a review on the new Unknown RTA, the new, new Hussar RTA, and the new VWM RTA soon. I can't speak on those three yet because I haven't tried them. But for right now, I would say that, you know, the Imperia is probably the better route than this RTA. Now, if you're a huge NAR fanboy, don't chop my head off. Um, you know, I'm not saying this tank is bad. I just think for the price point it's at, it should have been perfect. Um, so that's pretty much all I have for you guys today. I appreciate everyone stopping by and we will see you on the next review, which will be the Atmazoo vape shell or steam shell. Sorry. All right. Have a good rest of your day, guys.